Hi, it's me, Caribbean Andy. Uh, today, I wanted to do a video where I talk about my experience and why I started a YouTube channel. So I say in almost every cocktail video that I have 20 years experience, and that's not 20 years of making cocktails, but it has been 20 years since I first got a job in hospitality. And I, I wanna take you through all of that. I wanna take you through some of my motivations of uh, doing all of this and hopefully also have you get to know me a little bit better. And I, f I thought a fun way to do that would be to do uh, like a job interview. So I Googled uh, restaurant job interview questions. Uh, and thank you to AJ Beltis of sevenshifts.com. This is not an endorsement of that person or this blog, but it is the first search results that came up. So. Here we go. This is a video of me uh, giving myself a job interview. Buckle up. Uh, common restaurant interview questions. Tell me about yourself. How to answer. Walk the interviewer through your experience. Smile and be personable. And include one or two facts. Okay. Um, so I started, like I said, my first job. I was 14 years old. I got a job working for my dad's friend. He owned a bar. I worked on Saturday mornings mostly. I would unload the beer orders. I'd help the bartender get ice. We'd set up, take out the garbage from the night before. Not a whole lot of action going on, but eventually I did work some parties and other events and things. Uh, and that really helped me get my feet wet as far as restaurant work. Pretty easy gig. Uh, and I, I was also incredibly young. I mean, I was 14 working at a bar. Uh, so everyone seemed so much older than me but they were probably like 22, 23. Later, I got another busing job uh, starting at 19. I think I worked uh, at that job for about two years. And uh, both of those places really helped me to understand what this work is like. At, at the end of the day, like the setting can be very different. The people can even be very different, but there are some of those core elements that are the same in all hospitality work. And uh, I got introduced to that at a really early age. And I've always known that it's something that I've liked, you know, the pace of it and what have you. Later, uh, I, well, here's a fun fact about me. When I was 21, I got a work visa and moved to England. I lived uh, on the Bunak British University's North America Club six month work visa. And I worked some bartending jobs there. That was the first time I ever got to officially pour and serve drinks. I would often quit those jobs when I wanted to travel or I would take, you know, trial shifts. They have you come in and work a night as a busser or in a support role, pay you cash at the end of the night and then tell you to come back the next day for an interview if they liked you. Or you could just not show up. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but that's how I handled it. Uh, I'm not going to get this job. So there's that. Uh, then from there, uh, I moved back home and I went to open interviews for a corporate restaurant. And that was very appealing to me. It seemed like everybody working there was cool and nice. And I started as a server, I applied as a bartender, started as a server, a bar shift opened up. They let me start with one open and I made the best of it. And eventually they let me bartend every night. Then eventually I became a manager and I learned so much there. Uh, but learning about, you know, the financials and uh, learning about leadership, learning about technique and skill that goes along with bartending, not so much learning about cocktails. Uh, I left that job because I wanted something that uh, was less of a time commitment. Managing a restaurant can be a 60 plus hour a week job, and I didn't want to do that anymore. So I got a bartending job uh, working with a lot of people who were very familiar with cocktails. Also, I've said in some of these videos, you know, I don't think bartending is something that you can necessarily learn from reading. But what I should say is that it's not something you can learn from reading alone. And there's a lot of great books out there. If you're a fan of cocktails on YouTube, then you probably know a lot of those books. Something that I used as a resource early on and still do today was Jeffrey Morgenthaler's blog. Uh, and he's written two books. I have both of them there. You can probably see them behind me. Uh, but that, along with starting this new job where I'm making classic cocktails for the first time, I'm learning about uh, different kinds of Amaro and working alongside people who have really uh, perfected the, the craft element of this for years and years. And that was a huge learning experience, also a huge friend making experience. And the people I met there, uh, the connections I made is what allowed me to move to Los Angeles. I'm 
Fun fact number two, I've also spent a good part of the last 10 or so years doing improv and sketch comedy. Uh, and I wanted to pursue that more. So I wanted to move to LA. And uh, through people I knew from working here in Pittsburgh, I was able to get a job working for, I can just say it, nobody's watching this. Uh, I worked for uh, Michael Voltaggio at his restaurant, Inc. Uh, he was a top chef winner. So going in there, I applied for that job as a bartender. They said, oh, well, we'd like you to be a food runner. I said, no, thank you. Uh, and then we met in the middle and I was hired as a server. And this was definitely the most serious job I'd had. Uh, it was definitely a challenge. Uh, you know, it was so stressful because I wasn't used to managing a section, uh, all of the steps of fine dining and coursing out food and the, just the timing of everything. And plus, you know, it's very serious in there and people are spending a lot of money, so you have to do a good job. Uh, but eventually I got the hang of it, I was training people there, uh, but decided to move back to Pittsburgh, uh, where I ultimately ended up, you know, um, running a couple of bar programs, again, through people I had known from that other job. And then, you know, we're hit with a global pandemic, and here we are. Uh, so basically, that's that's my work history um, and two facts for you. Question number two. Can I tell you about a time when I had to deal with a difficult customer? And what did you do in the situation? Okay. I did have, uh, I've, I mean, I've had difficult customers every day. The one that stands out, this is really just an excuse to tell this story. Uh, it was New Year's Eve, and uh, I was working at the restaurant uh, where I said, you know, I was working alongside bartenders, made a lot of friends. Uh, there was actually three restaurants in one building, and I was working on the first floor bar on New Year's Eve, and we had a rooftop bar. You had to take an elevator to get up there, and there was a woman who uh, they were not allowing upstairs because of how much she had had to drink. Uh, however, uh, we didn't kick her out. I'm not entirely sure why. I hadn't served her or anything at this point. Wasn't involved in any of it. But I'm working service well, and it's fairly slow. It was New Year's Eve downtown, you know, maybe 10, 10.30 at night. And she came over to service well, slurring her words, not even really able to stand, ordering two Moscow mules, three shots of Fireball, and a Tito soda. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what her order was tonight. I just looked at her and said, I'm not giving you any of that. And that was it. I didn't want to engage with it anymore. I didn't want to start any kind of argument. There was no way. She wanted one thing. I obviously couldn't give that to her. I probably was a little bit more sarcastic than I needed to be. But at the end of the day, like, the best way to handle that is to stop interacting. Like, once you become involved, like, then it's all, it becomes your problem. Uh, I had plenty of other things to do and other guests to be worrying about. So I go and I go to pour a draft beer a few minutes later. So I'm back to service bar and unbeknownst to me, she gets up, marches behind the bar and punches me right in the back of the head and then runs away. It hurt, uh, but it was also crazy to me. So my response was rather than get immediately angry. I went over to, we had security staff, we had an off-duty cop for New Year's Eve, and I told them what happened. So they went and chased her, uh, eventually caught her, handcuffed her. She's crying on the street, makeup running in a very nice fancy dress. Her sister's out there, her brother-in-law's like, she needs to learn a lesson. She's doing this stuff all the time. Uh, my manager's like, you have to press charges. People shouldn't be allowed to get away with these sorts of things. But at the end of the day, like, my gosh, if she's not learning a lesson from having been handcuffed, handcuffed on New Year's Eve, I don't know that she's going to learn her lesson from having to pay fines or appear in court. And I didn't want to go to court. Uh, so yeah, I didn't press charges. But staying calm. Uh, that's how you handle difficult guests in any situation. You know, I've I've had others... Uh, at the end of the day, what you have to do is suppress your emotions. It's really easy to get angry in situations, uh, high tension working in bars, especially when you're busy, but staying calm, that's the number one thing you have to do. Question number three, what do you think about, like about our restaurant? Okay, so um, I'm not actually applying for a restaurant job, so let's change that question. And what do you think about and like about YouTube? So I have always really enjoyed making videos for silly reasons and 
you know, I started these food review videos where I feel like I was doing sort of a, a parody of YouTube, or at least that was the goal. I don't know if it came across that way. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that appeals to me. But over the past few months, I've learned that there really is a community. You know, it's a really interesting network here on, on YouTube. And I do think that I have a unique perspective and I wanted to be able to contribute to that, you know? And I, I think there's an opportunity, you know, these videos, uh, whether you like them or not, these videos are reaching to strangers. And I have made some sort of little like internet friends uh, through making these videos. And I've watched theirs, you know, and it's it's a lot of fun. I really had no idea how many cocktail channels there were until I made one of my own. And there are some really great ones. Like uh, I think Educated Barfly and Steve the Bartender are probably my two favorites because I think they're two guys who have the experience and uh, they're, you know, bringing that to their videos. And really straight to the point, uh, both have a really great grasp on technique and sort of do a nice balance between cocktail history and making the drinks deliciously. I hope that what I can bring is that's different from either of those gentlemen. You know, I think that for me, I'm not, not to say pretentious, but I also just, there's some things I just don't care about. And there's places that I want to cut corners and I want to really make things easy and approachable and fun and make cocktails that you can do at home without spending a lot of money or giving up too much of your time. You know, I, I want to make this easy and approachable and accessible uh, for anybody watching. So I think YouTube is a really great uh, vehicle to do that. And uh, I've been really happy with doing it so far after just uh, four months or so and plan to keep up with it. Question number four. Can you tell me about a mistake you've made on the job and how you handled it? Yeah. Um, so I think I make a lot of mistakes. I think we all do. I might even make more than most people. But something I will always tell you is that in my most recent job, my boss would always say to me, I love that you always tell on yourself. On every scenario, the first thing I do, if I make a mistake, is I, I bring it to everyone's attention. Uh, be open, be honest. Everyone's going to be a lot more patient and forgiving with you because of that. I have entirely forgotten to place orders before. I One time, so in the rooftop bar, we had draft cocktails. We also had Fireball on draft, which Fireball was very big at the time. I don't know if people even still drink Fireball, but uh, we, you know, we would pour shots of it from the tap and that made it like fun and gimmicky. And we also charged way too much money for it, but we had to fill up kegs with handle bottles, bottles of Fireball. And I accidentally poured the Fireball into our Negroni keg, which obviously ruins everything and you can't separate those back out. So uh, no, honestly, probably wouldn't have been that bad, uh, but we couldn't sell it. So I immediately just went over and told my manager and I was really sorry. I am still really sorry. It's been five years and I still feel bad about it because I could have just, if I had taken my time and checked to be 100% sure of what I was doing and not trying to take on too many things at one time, I wouldn't have made that mistake. Uh, now my manager was angry. Uh, admittedly, that was a mistake that cost several hundred dollars. And uh, there weren't any immediate repercussions, but I will say, if I see this man, I think he's brought that incident up to me. Oh, uh, anytime I've seen him over the last five years. So uh, <laughs> there's that. Also, on a YouTube note, I uh, already filmed this video, not doing these interview questions, but I filmed a different version of this yesterday. And I, or I thought I did. I did not press record and that was very frustrating because I thought I did a really good job. Um, ultimately, I think that this is a more fun format for the video, so I'm glad it worked out this way. But again, you know, I couldn't even be upset with myself. Don't dwell on it, be honest and just keep moving. Make a new video. Question number five. Uh, can you tell me about a time when you and a coworker clashed and how you resolved it? Okay, well, obviously, I've never clashed with a coworker. No, I'm kidding. I I clash with coworkers a lot. Uh, I am, I think, overall, really easy to get along with, and I try to always be very positive at work. But, you know, working in a restaurant, tensions are high. 
Uh, you can say things in ways that you don't mean. You can also hear things in ways that they're not intended. So uh, I don't have a specific answer for this, and this isn't a real job interview, so I don't think that it matters. But I'll tell you that there's probably 12 examples of clashing with a coworker, and at least 11 of them are all my fault. Uh, moving on, question number six. Can I tell you about my proudest moment working in a restaurant? Well, yeah. Sure, proudest work moment working in a restaurant. Uh, when I worked at Inc. in LA, we actually closed the restaurant and we moved. Uh, so I think uh, what was really important to me, my friend Courtney and I, we were specifically tasked with setting up the new restaurant, uh, at least from the service perspective. We decided where all the plates were going to be stored, how we were gonna roll the silverware, what was going in the different stations, uh, how the buttons should be laid on the, on the POS. We did a lot of work in a very short period of time. And uh, almost days after, we also moved and opened the new restaurant in under two weeks. I think it was actually like eight working days. So it was not. So very proud of the quick turnaround in that. But then we also had a uh, famous uh, LA restaurant critic, Jonathan Gold, come in. Uh, immediately after we opened and he came in. Courtney was actually a server. Uh, I helped, but, uh, you know, having him come in just, and then obviously really enjoying his meal. He wrote a, a pretty nice piece about it. He sadly passed away, but you know, after all that hard work, and this was in the middle of the summer, air conditioning didn't work any, everywhere. Uh, it, it was exhausting. We put so much into it, but then to really open for our first couple of services and then, have such a great response from people whose opinions we really respected. Um, that I think is my my proudest moment working in a restaurant uh, at, at the end of that shift. What are the most important skills someone in this role should have? And that role being, you know, somebody who is bartending for YouTube. Obviously, I think having a personality is important if you're doing this on camera or in person. And the thing about that is, I think everyone has a personality. Uh, you, you can't, everyone's personality is different, but I think you also need to know, be aware of your personality, you know, and embrace it and figure out your own voice. And that's where uh, bartending and YouTube may differ. Actually, I don't even know if I'd say that's true. Like, cause you know, there are different styles of service. You know, I may approach a guest very differently than jo I can't think of a fake name. I may approach a guest very differently than Pam or Jim approaches a guest. Uh, but I think really recognizing uh, your own personality and your unique voice apply both to video and hospitality work. I think obviously multitasking, that's a phrase that comes up a lot, but it's not even multitasking. There's actually studies say that the human brain can't multitask. We can just switch between topics very quickly. You do need to know your sort of order of operations to be a good bartender. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to bring in their food, take their order, make their drinks, clear this table. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that, again, is going to come through experience. But that ability to sort of stack uh, stack tasks in your head and, and plan things out, always know the next two things you're going to be doing. That's one of the most important skills. And I think that's also really important when planning out your, 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 your YouTube. I think that's also very important when planning out your YouTube videos. You know, there needs to be a certain level of planning that goes into place. You know, I... For me, I did my first video about what I think uh, you need to do to how to get a bartending job. And now I'm talking to you about all the different bartending jobs that I've had. Uh, so there you go. Those are the important skills you need to have for this particular role. How do I think I embody the skills that I just mentioned? Well, you know, I think that I really do try and uh, put a, a large emphasis on the fun and humorous side of my personality. I think that I try to be very honest, and I think that I am always trying to plan ahead. That's how I embody those things. Question number nine. 
when was the time you went out of your way to delight a guest? Uh, one time I got Goldie Hawn a new vodka cranberry. Uh, where do you see yourself on a team? You know, I have been in leadership roles in most of my jobs. And I would say that's not really, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be the boss. I don't want to be in charge, but I do want to sort of be, uh, the, the captain. I want to be the quarterback of a bar team. You know, that is where I, I think that I fit best. I think that I'm great at working with a variety of different kinds of people. And I think that I also am good at sort of uh, uh, taking everyone's ideas and bringing them together and coming out with a cohesive output. There, did I answer your question? Uh, what questions do I have for you? Okay, well, YouTube audience, my questions for you are, are you enjoying this? Uh, what kind of things do you want to see from a YouTube channel about hospitality? I don't want this to just be about cocktails. I want it to be about all of the things that go into doing this work. And I don't know, my questions for you are, what questions do you have? Go ahead and ask them in the comments down below. And then finally, question number 12, why should we hire you? And for that, I would say, let's make that question, why should you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Well, I, ho I hope that, you know, I've made a compelling argument so far. I hope that I've demonstrated that I do have experience and knowledge. I think you should subscribe to this channel because I think that one thing I've been putting an em emphasis on lately in terms of cocktails is sort of tweaking recipes in the way that I think they work better according to my palate. And I'm able to do that because of my experience. But I also think like, I haven't seen, it's probably out there because the YouTube is infinite, but I haven't seen a lot of people like me who are modern bartenders who are talking about working in the industry. And I think that that's actually probably really important at a time when the hospitality industry is completely different. And it's going to be different for a very long time, you know? Uh, the global pandemic uh, is really changing this industry more than most other things. Uh, so I hope that together, you know, we can build a community. You subscribe, like, and comment on the videos because that helps these videos to get out uh, through the YouTube algorithm to other people who might enjoy them. And I hope that we can build a little community here and uh, all learn from each other. So that's why you should hire me, YouTube. Uh, that's that's really that's the end of the interview. Uh, I don't know if I passed. Uh, I don't know um, if I did the things that sevenshifts.com is suggesting I should do. It says don't brag. I mean, I I think I did a little, but I think you should brag a little bit in a job interview. Also, if you're a person um, who is conducting a job interview, don't ask these dumb questions. Don't talk down on previous employers. I'd say that's a pretty good tip. Tell the truth. I did tell the, always tell the truth. Um, maybe not all of the time, but yeah, just be honest. Uh, dress for the occasion. I didn't really do that. Um, and remind yourself to smile. Gosh, smile everybody. Cheers.